Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Emily Murase, Director of the San Francisco Department on the Status of Women, the only department on the status of women in the nation. Since 1975, San Francisco has been the home of the strongest commission on the status of women in the nation. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the annual Women's History Month celebration. This year, we celebrate the national theme of valiant women of the vote. We honor the brave women who fought for suffrage rights for women and the women who continue to fight for the voting rights of others. Uh, very pleased to say we're joined by um, many members of the elected family, city family, uh, Treasurer Jose Cisneros. If you could hold your applause, we'll give them big applause uh, after. Assessor Carmen Chu, uh, Board of Supervisors, President Norman Yi, uh, Catherine, uh, Supervisor Catherine Stephanie, uh, Supervisor Sandra Lee Fewer, Supervisor Asha Safai, uh, and Fire Chief Jenny Nicholson, and Police Chief William Scott. So let's give them a big round of applause for showing up today. I'd also like to recognize Women's Commissioner Sophia Andari and Julie Su from the Commission on the Status of Women. Also joining us is President Linda Calhoun and an Executive Director Vernalisa of the Friends, of, Vernalisa Caba of the Friends of the Commission on the Status of Women. And I just want to thank my Associate Director Carol Sacco for her exceptional support for today's event. Uh, we are also joined by many women department heads. Raise your hand if you're a women department head. as well as many women leaders serving on our commissions and boards. Can we have a wave from our women commission and board members? So we mark uh, 100 years since the passage of the 19th Amendment. Uh, it's important to remember that as the sixth state to ratify the 19th Amendment, California has played a major role in the narrative of the national women's suffrage movement. Newly uncovered historical sources put together by the Glen Park Neighborhoods History Project indicate that San Francisco was the site of the first ever suffrage march in 1908. Over 100 years ago, suffrage leaders picketed the White House, went to jail, endured intense personal suffering in order to secure the vote for women. I do want to note this is my last Women's History Month as a department head. I will be leaving my position at the end of the month um, after 15 years of service. And I had the honor to serve uh, former mayor, now Governor Gavin Newsom, the late great Mayor Ed Lee, and now the first African American woman and the only second woman to be elected to the mayor of San Francisco, the one and only London Breed. Mayor Breed has made advancing equity for all, including gender equity, a hallmark of her administration. She's working every day to achieve a vision of San Francisco that is inclusive, fair, and compassionate, one that stands up and supports all its residents. She has a great team, and I do want to thank two members of her exceptional staff, Senior Policy Advisor Nicole Lindler and Appointment Secretary Kanishka Chang, who helped with today's program. Finally, before I bring the mayor up, I want to thank the hardworking staff of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services who makes these celebrations so special for the entire city. So please join me in welcoming Mayor London Breed and happy Women's History Month. Thank you, Emily. I don't know if you all heard Emily say this is one of her last uh, Women's History Month uh, events as a director of the Commission on the Status of Women, and she has done an incredible job leading this department for so many years. So let's give her a round of applause for her service. And thank you to all the women who are here. There are not just women commissioners from the Commission on the Status of Women. There are women commissioners who serve in various capacities in this city who have joined us here today to celebrate Women's History Month in San Francisco. 
uh, because we know that there are still a number of inequalities that still exist uh, for women. And in fact, as a woman mayor, I still, believe it or not, experience some of those when I'm even in meetings even today, dealing with the challenges of the city. Questions that I get asked that I know if I wasn't a woman, I would never get asked. But the fact is, we've made a tremendous number of gains. And I just look around and I look at the fact that so many of you serve in so many capacities. I mean, even think about the history of our police department. And we see now Deputy Chief Ann Mannix and other leading women who are basically running the police department in San Francisco. We see members of our Board of Supervisors, our Fire Chief, uh, Janine Nicholson, and so many incredible leaders who continue to lead the city, both as the directors of departments, as well as commissioners, as well as presidents of the commissions and boards. Uh, but we also know that it shouldn't take 30 years to have the second female mayor of San Francisco. So while we've come a long way, we know that there is still a long way to go. And as uh, Emily has said, we are celebrating the 100th, 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, giving the women uh, the right to vote. And it is time, ladies, that we exercise that right to vote because we know there is power when we serve on boards and commission. We know there is power when we, are have, when we are at the table making the decisions that impact our lives. Just think about it. The fact that we are even discussing in the year 2020 a woman's right to choose and we have to get out there and defend that, even in 2020, is absolutely insane. It means the work that we do now is important more than it has ever been. I mean, think about what San Francisco has done. Significant policies that the rest of the country is following including our paid parental leave, which people are still excited and talking about today. <laughs> Lactaid stations and things that really address the challenges of motherhood that people who may not have babies understand. Uh, what mothers have to do in the workplace to, of course, make a living and take care of their families. There's still work that we need to do. And today's honorees, represent San Francisco values at their very best because the work that they do highlights the need to do more to get people to register to vote, to get more people interested in causes and policies that impact women, to help understand how our voices are important. And when we come together and we vote, we make magic happen. We make change happen. We make the kinds of policies that we know need to be here even when we're no longer here. We don't want 20 years from now the next generation fighting for a woman's right to choose. We don't want the next generation fighting for the same policies that should already exist in this city that protect and support women. So today's honorees represent, as I said, incredible women who really have focused on advancing the rights of women, who are spending a lot of their time trying to get women registered to vote, to address what we know. Even in San Francisco, as we see a lower voter turnout, we know disproportionately that it impacts people of color and it impacts women. And so getting women registered, getting them to turn out to vote is important, and having organizations that are dedicated to that cause is also, is also significantly important. Our first honoree is a Muslim American woman of color who is a child of immigrants who came to the United States. She works tirelessly to engage women, register them to vote, and connect them with volunteer and civic opportunities. Have you ever come across people who say, well, what do I do? How do I get involved? What's the next step? And people have no idea what to do. And Nadia Rahman has been doing this work to help motivate and get women, especially women who have not been actively engaged, engaged. She volunteered a lot of her time during the 2018 midterm elections, traveling around California, speaking with people across the state, and educating communities about how to get involved and how to register to vote. She has worked with Postmark Salon, 
since its founding in 2017 to bring women together and to take action. So please, ladies and gentlemen, help welcome Nadia Rahman, and she is this year's person that I'm honoring for Women's History Month. Thank you so much, Mayor Breed. Uh, thank you for being a pioneer um, in modeling leadership in every way for girls and women in San Francisco, especially for girls and women of color. Mayor Breed's work to cut red tape in City Hall, take on the city's housing, housing shortage, and end homelessness in San Francisco ensures that this city can truly be a home for everyone. Thank you for everyone who came out to participate today. It's great to see this balcony be full um, and see many familiar faces in the crowd as well. Um, thank you for participating in the celebration of Women's History Month. 2020 is such an important year in so many ways, and there's a lot to celebrate and look back on, including 100 years since the 19th Amendment was added to the US Constitution, finally giving women the right to vote. So securing that right to vote, um, we heard a little bit about everything that went into that. So the formal women's suffrage movement started in 1848, 72 years before that amendment was adopted into the Constitution. 30 years after that, in 1878, was actually when the first amendment was introduced and it failed. And then finally, in 1920, 100 years ago, it was adopted. And women and their allies secured the right to vote. So as we look ahead into the rest of 2020, we're already in March now, I ask that we all be attuned to the time that we're in right now. Uh, Mayor Reed did a great job of talking about how our civil liberties are under attack and how that's particularly affecting women, um, and also women of color specifically. So let's be intentional about how we choose to spend our time this year. It's of critical importance that we pay attention and we do the work of winning elections for people that share our values. San Franciscan values of equity, inclusiveness, and radical acceptance. If the suffragettes worked towards these goals, worked towards their goal for decades, for 72 years in a formal way, across multiple generations of women and men, we can commit to eight months to get us to November 2020, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to conclude my remarks with an ask of you all. Please push yourselves harder this year. Pay more attention. Be more informed. Push yourself to whatever your personal commitment to civic engagement looks like. That can be calling a friend or a relative tomorrow to remind them to vote in the California primary. That can be canvassing for an, a candidate that inspires you in a, swing state, in a swing district in California or a swing state somewhere in the United States. Let's all commit to being as informed and engaged as possible this year, and let's hold on to that beyond November 2020 so we don't find ourselves back in this place ever again. And if you even think about tuning out or turning off this year or in the future, please think of those suffragettes who worked for decades towards the right to vote. Thank you. Thank you. So the uh, next honorees for uh, today are a group of incredible, inspiring women who decided after the election in 2016, when the other 45 was <laughs> elected. Um, I don't know about you, but that night I was campaigning for uh, my re-election for supervisor of uh, District 5, and I was walking around the neighborhood and I, I ran into a young woman 
who basically was in tears, um, and so many people were hurt. I mean, I won uh, that election, but I was still devastated by the results of what happened as a result of that election. And as a result of that, these incredible women got together and they said, you know what, we're going to do something because, you know, I won't even, I don't even want to talk about what we all know that this president has done that has been truly not only offensive to women, but continues to roll back many of the gains that we have made. Um, but they came together and they really started a movement. Uh, the Women's March has been really a place that has brought so many women together uh, for inspiring speeches, to connect with other women. And yes, there are some men that show up too. And they're always welcome with open arms. But what I noticed about the men who show up, they're showing up with their daughters. They're showing up with their moms. They're showing up with their family members in solidarity for what we know we need to call attention to the challenges that women continue to face in this country. And it's clear that no matter what political spectrum you are on, there is a sincere need for women to come together for the purpose of talking about the things that matter to us the most. And so this has created a platform. The Women's March has just really taken on a whole nother dimension. It is not only expanded to other cities uh, throughout the country, uh, where they even had a women's march in Napa. I was thinking because I love wine, I was gonna go join them. <laughs> but I was already committed to San Francisco. But they're not just focused on a women's march, they're, de they're focused on advocacy and support year round in helping to outreach, to get more women registered, to get more people actively engaged, to make sure they're turning out. So they are all volunteers spending their time in order to provide a platform for women all over the country. And the people here in San Francisco, uh, they do it uh, with a lot of love and a lot of, um, I know, complaints from other people. Um, <laughs> but they still try to provide the opportunity for people to be heard and to be recognized and a diverse community. And I know it's a lot of work, but you still do it every single year, even though sometimes it may feel like, oh, I don't wanna do it again this year, it's a lot of work. But we are with you, we appreciate what you're doing, and as long as we're here in San Francisco, we'll be there to support the work that you continue to do. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I wanna invite up one of our commissioners from the Commission on the Status of Women, Sophia Andari, a founder of the Women's March, as well as Anne Macaliano, uh, to say a few words and to really thank them, along with, there's a bunch of women here who helped to coordinate uh, this event every single year. And so after these ladies say a few words, we're going to ask them to come up uh, and for a photo. Good afternoon. My name is Sophia Andari. I'm a founding member and co-chair of Women's March San Francisco. I'm joined by founding member Elizabeth Lanyon, Kelly Dennehy, Martha Shaughnessy, Heather Landeros, Jeanette Wong, who's here in spirit, she's working, <laughs> and uh, co-chair Anne Mercoliano. And we have other leads of Women's March San Francisco as well. We're all right here. On behalf of Women's March San Francisco, thank you, Mayor Breed, for this incredible honor. Thank you so much. A group of 10 women came together right after the November 2016 election, not knowing the impact that we would have on each other and our communities. Over 100,000 marched on January 21, 2017, in the pouring rain, pouring rain, to affirm our commitment to women's rights, human rights, civil liberties, and social justice for all. Since then, we have partnered with numerous community organizations to continue that work through events, marches, and actions 
to keep our communities civically engaged. Stressing the importance of voting, getting involved in local and national campaigns, and empowering women to run for office and take on more leadership positions. Commissioners, more commissioners. Now, regardless of the outcome of the upcoming election, we cannot afford to be idle anymore. We need to show up, to, we need to show up with our votes for our most marginalized, elect more women, especially women of color, run for office, and take on more leadership roles so that women take 51% of seats in local government, in the Senate and the House, in boardrooms, and in all rooms where decisions are being made. Thank you again for honoring our team, to the mayor and the mayor's office and the commission on status of women. I'm gonna hand it over to my co-chair, Anne. Again, thank you so much for everybody who's come out today. I'm Anne Mercogliano. I am the co-chair of the Women's March with Sophia. As Sophia highlighted, none of the Women's March's accomplishments over the last four years would have been possible without the volunteers and the partners that we had working and organizing on nights, weekends, and any other moments of time we could find. I'd especially like to thank some of our other leadership team that we have here today, Crystal Mack, Emmy Joyeux, Robin Schulman, Ariel Maeve, Christina Oberon Chow, and all the talent and hard work that you guys bring to this organization. I'd also like to express our deepest thanks to the partners who have helped us put this together and bring a life our movement. This includes NARAL, Planned Parenthood of Northern California, the Women's Building, the JCCSF, GLIDE, the Global Fund for Women, CARE SF, the Commonwealth Club, and the League of Women Voters San Francisco. Woo. <laughs> Our mission is to empower everyone who stands for human rights, civil liberties, and social justice for all. We will continue and organize to march because we realize that defending the most marginalized among us is defending all of us. In 2020, we know that this marks 100 years of some women gaining the right to vote. The women who demanded this right were extraordinary in their conviction, but also ordinary in the fact that it was a critical mass of people coming together to demand more. To all the women who marched for us, who are arrested for us, who gave their lives for women to have their voice and their votes be heard, we honor you today and we promise to humbly continue in your footsteps to all among us achieve equity. Thank you all for having us to celebrate. Thank you, Mayor Breed, and happy Women's History Month. So thank you. So as the um, women who are on the board for the Women's March comes forward so that we can take a photo together, um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for coming out today to celebrate these incredible women, to kick off Women's History Month. Tomorrow, uh, the Board of Supervisors will be hosting uh, their own ceremony in the board chamber starting at what time? Starting at 2.30, where I know they're going to be honoring some phenomenal women uh, like we are today. And so uh, thank you all so much for being here. After this photo, I'd also like to uh, take a photo with all the uh, women commissioners and women department heads that are joining us, since there are so many of you here today. I want to take advantage of this incredible opportunity. Um, you know, I know that uh, it feels like there are challenging times ahead of us, um, especially in San Francisco and throughout this country. Uh, but when I look around this room here today, when I think about so many of the incredible, inspiring leaders that are with us right here on this balcony, I can't help but be excited about what we are going to do to change the future for the better because we know that we are stronger when we come together and there is nothing that we can't accomplish. So we wanna keep that in mind as we move forward with these challenges. We are gonna take it all head on. We are gonna do it because you know what? When women are in charge, great things happen. <laughs> Thank you all so much.